Hello, in this series of videos I will show you some basic web security attacks, starting with SQL injections and moving on to other things like XSS and CSRF. In this first video I will show you the simplest possible SQL injection that you can do. For my examples I will use something called DVWA, the DOM Vulnerable Web Application, which is a web application that was designed to be specifically vulnerable to security attacks. So let's get started. Well, okay, uh, here I have a virtual machine where I'm running DVWA, uh, the, the service that is hosting my vulnerable web application. It is a live CD, a, a Linux Ubuntu live CD, and it's a, running a very old version of Ubuntu. As you can see here, it's um, version 10.04 LTS. So this is a very insecure version on its own, and it's running old versions of Apache and PHP and MySQL as well. So this is one reason it's vulnerable. And uh, if you if you look at a modern web, web application that uses modern versions of these languages and, and frameworks, you will not find such huge vulnerabilities as we will see here. So let's grab the IP of this, uh, of this service. And you can see it has a, a local IP here. And what I will do is I will open up Chrome and try to visit this website. So let's, let's try it. So it's 185, that's it. And you can see it's uh, it's opened the DVWA application. So let's log in here. Um, so the, the, it's just using the default username and password, which is admin and password. And uh, here we are logged in. Now, um, this application is just made to train you in vulnerabilities, in looking for vulnerabilities and exploiting them, just so you can, so you can see how, how this is done for very simple cases. Um, so the, the first thing to do is go to the settings here in the security and make it low so that the application is actually vulnerable. And uh, you can see there's two other levels, medium and high. High is supposed to be impossible to break. So the developers of this have uh, designed the code so that you can't really attack it. Um, low is um, trivially attackable in a sense. It's the, the simplest case of them all. And then medium is maybe um, an alternative security bug or maybe um, the, the programmer has developed some sort of defense, but that defense doesn't actually work correctly. So uh, let's start with low and um, let's look at SQL injections for this particular video. So we go to this SQL injection tab here. And um, this website supposedly provides you with the ability to look up um, a user profile based on their user ID. And if you think about it, this is quite common in various web applications. For example, Facebook, allows you to visit a user profile based on the user ID. If you, if you look at the URL of a uh, user profile, it often contains a user ID. Um, so given the user ID, you're able to request information about that user. So let's type, for example, the number two, and you can see some information about this user, the first name and the surname. This is quite a, realis a realistic uh, web application, uh, except, of course, it's not showing us a full profile, but this is not required for this attack. Um, so one interesting thing to note is that usually the first user in the database is someone with admin privileges. In this case, it's called admin admin. So let's take a look at the PHP source code of this website and see what it does. So what it does is uh, it has some mixed HTML and um, SQL code in here. It's just like one um, badly written web application that has it all mixed in with no particular attention to architecture. And um, we are asked to see if this is going to have some sort of vulnerability. And the, because it's an SQL injection vulnerability, we have to look at the query that is being run. So let's take a look at this code and see what it does. First, it checks if I've clicked the submit button. And if I have, then it runs all of this code. It grabs the ID that um, was given to it. So you can see, for example, here it's uh, ID is equal to 1. Um, and then it um, assigns the string that contains the SQL query to a variable here. And um, next, what it does is it calls the mysql underscore query function. And this accepts as, as a parameter the string of the query to be executed. And if this, success, if this is successful, then it assigns the result to the variable called result. Otherwise, it terminates execution with a particular error which is retrieved using the mysql underscore error call and then it's also displayed to the user. Uh, next, what it does is it checks to see how many rows there are in the result 
and stores this in a variable called num, and then it loops through all of these rows with a while loop that could have also been a for loop. So i starts at zero, and then until it reaches uh, the number num, it's incremented and all of this code is executed. So in this code, there's two parts. There's a backend part and there's a frontend part. The, the backend part runs the MySQL underscore carry, uh, or sorry, the MySQL underscore result function, and it passes the result um, object from here, or uh, resource, whatever. And then it passes the number of the row that we're interested in, and then the, the name of the column that we're interested in. So from the result variable, which is a which holds a result table, a MySQL result table, it retrieves the ith row and the, the column named first name. And it stores that in the variable first, and the same for the uh, last name, which is stored in the variable last. And finally, uh, some HTML code is uh, sent back to the client where the variables are echoed back to the user. So this displays the names. Now, if we enter the, the ID 1 or the ID 2 in here, we can see that this will produce a valid query. So let's just think about what this will do. Let's copy it to, to some editor. Um, so here we have Vim, and let's copy it over. And if I type in this location, I type the number 1, then you can see that this is a valid SQL query. It's syntactically correct. Um, and Remember that in PHP, if you have a double quote here, this creates a new string, and then whenever it sees the dollar character with uh, a variable name followed, then it replaces, or um, as they call it, 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 it interpolates the variable within the string, meaning it replaces the value of the variable into the location where its name is specified. This is similar to what Perl does. Um, notice also that at this location, PHP is not aware that this is actually a MySQL query. It's For PHP, it's just a regular string that it passes to some function, and it is agnostic to the fact that this is actually code. And this is something important to note when you try to realize what is the exact like deep problem in this kind of situation. Uh, what is the deeper security problem? Okay, so let's uh, first try and see if we can cause a syntax error in this query. And this is something that you will do in case you don't have access to the source code like we do here, um, to, to see if the application may be vulnerable. So um, as you can see, we control here whatever, uh, whatever string is put in there, whatever string is interpolated in here, so we can put whatever we like. And if instead of the number one, we put a single quote character, you can see that this will hopefully cause a syntax error for this application because it has three single quotes, an opening quote, a closing quote, and then a third quote that is an, a new opening quote, which is unclosed. So MySQL should complain, and um, given the fact that here we have a die condition, we should be able to see the error that this is causing. So let's go ahead and, and enter just the single quote here and enter submit. So you can see already we have an indication that this application is badly written even if we didn't have access to the source code. So this reads that you have an error in your SQL syntax, check the manual that corresponds to your MySQL server version for the right syntax to use near, and then it has a single quote which is enclosed in two single quotes like that, and this is how MySQL um, displays errors or, uh, or displays um, the sub-command, the part of your command that causes the error, which is just a single quote for us. And then it says at line one. So this indicates to us that the programmer has not escaped correctly the input of the user, and maybe we can try uh, more aggressively to exploit this uh, web application. So um, let's think what we can do. Let's see if we can um, cause this SQL query to, to retrieve something additional, or maybe we can close the quote like, like that, but still not cause a, an error. So what I will do is I will try to do something like this. So if I can cause this query to be executed, note that this will be um, a true WHERE clause for all the records of the database, of all, for all the records of the table, because this condition will be false for every record, but this condition will be true for every record, and because they're ORed, therefore it will be true for every record. Um, so in order to make that happen, I have to enter this selected text in my text box. 
and um, it may be a little bit confusing about what I enter and what is existing in the code. So take a look at this. The first quote here that I select is something that the programmer supplies. The last quote here, the closing quote here, is also something that the programmer supplies. This is something that I, as an attacker, as an adversary, will type in the field. So notice that SQL is unable to distinguish which input is provided by the programmer and which input is provided by the adversary. And therefore, this opening quote here is closing here, then this OR is actually an SQL command, and then these two quotes are both provided by the adversary, it's an opening and a closing quote, and then this opening quote is provided by the adversary, and this one is provided by the programmer. Um, however, because every opening quote closes, and otherwise it's also syntactically correct, this will be executed fine if I input it correctly. So let's try to type it in. So I expect this to show me all the records of the database. So here you go. Uh, it has admin admin, Gordon Brown, Hackme, Pablo Picasso, and B B Bob Smith. Great. Well, interestingly, uh, this is um, not so useful. Well, we've done some attack, we've done an enumeration attack, we've enumerated all the users. This is not super useful because we were able to get all these details anyway by inputting one user ID after the other. So let's see if we can do something a little bit more interesting. Um, in this case, the attacker would be more interested in knowing the password of each user, especially the admin user. And this seems a little bit difficult because the select query has certain fields specified here and we're only allowed to edit this kind of portion here. And you may think, oh, you know, maybe I can just close this quote and then start a new query by separating them with a semicolon like that. And maybe I can do something like a new select password from users where user ID is equal to one to get the admin password. And um, because I don't want to mess with the closing quote of the programmer, I will open the quote here. So notice that if this is what I type as an attacker, this is a first query that should be executed, and then that's a second query that's going to be executed. And finally, this is the quote that will be closed by the programmer. So this looks like syntactically correct SQL code. And this is what the adversary should enter into the, the text box. However, this seems like it won't work. And the reason for this is that the MySQL underscore query of the, the PHP MySQL extension will refuse to execute multiple queries when a single MySQL underscore query call is made. And this is the default configuration of the PHP library. So if we try this, I guess we will get some sort of error because of this um, unrecognized semicolon here. Um, yeah, so indeed, like right after um, Right after the first uh, selection query, which was correct, and after the semicolon, you see that it encounters a syntax error because it says, I'm not expecting any additional queries after the first semicolon. So this was not executed. And I think in these um, ancient versions of PHP, um, they did this as a security measure. But um, as you can see, if you have SQL injections, this will not help you very much. So we have to think of something a little bit smarter here. Um, okay, so one idea is to use the union operator. And this is something that you will encounter a lot in uh, your career uh, when you explore SQL injections. It's a very common tool that you can use to um, cause data to appear in your injected query. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, we will have to close this quote, and then we will we will type the union operator. And I use new lines here just for clarity, but in the end, we will not put any new lines in the field. Um, and remember that union accepts two result tables as its input, so one on the left side of the union operator, which is here in line one, and one on the uh, right side of the union operator, which I will type here, and I just want to say I want the first name, uh, or let's say, let's say just the user ID um, and, and the password from users. Um, and let's say I want it from for every user, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the first one, of course, will be the admin password. So I, I'm good to go. Um, so notice that this SQL, this SQL select query will not output anything. It's going to be an empty result. 
And then this query is going to output one row for every user in the database. And it will have two fields, um, the user ID field and the password field. Um, and then lastly, um, these two results will be combined into one big table, which contains the rows of the first query and then appended the rows of the second query. And note that in order to do that, um, it is required that the number of, row of columns in the um, left-hand side of the union operator must, must match the number of columns in the right-hand side of the union operator. In this case, this is two. So let's try and see if this works. Um, so of course, I will need to remove my new lines, and I will also need to take care of this final closing quote that the programmer is putting there. And one way we could do that is we could say just, you know, where um, open quote zero is equal to that, right? So I'm saying open quote zero, close quote equal open quote zero, and then the final closing quote is the programmer's closing quote. So this is just a uh, um, trivially true um, where clause and it will be true for every record and therefore it should return all the users. So this is something that you should always keep in mind to maintain the correctness of your SQL syntax when doing these kind of injections. So let's try to copy it over to here and see what it does. And you can see indeed um, it has returned the um, user ID and the, the password for every user. And you will notice that here it says first name and surname because that's what the programmer programmed into this, right? So the programmer said print the, the word first name and then the, content, the contents of the variable first and the, um, then the label sur uh, surname and then the contents of the variable last. And notice that union maintains the names of the columns from the left-hand side result table. So in this case, they will be first underscore name and last underscore name. And uh, we didn't really have to, to do any renaming here. It just works uh, like it is. So we already have all the passwords and that's that's wonderful and this completes the attack basically. And um, I just want to touch a little bit on a few more things. One is, um, why is the password something that is unintelligible? And the reason for this is that this is not an actual password, but it's a password, password hash instead. Um, so a, a hash is something that I will not explain in this particular video, but it's a, a one-way function um, to go from something that's a, a plain text into something that is unintelligible like this. And uh, it is often used for um, authentication databases to store passwords, just in case they get leaked um, in the way that we managed here. This concludes the basic SQL injection attacks in DBWA. In the next video, I will show you a few more tricks that make your, your SQL injections more powerful. I will show you how you can still use SQL injections to uh, attack a database where you don't have access to the source code and you want to figure out what kind of table names there exist in the database, what kind of column names there exist in the database, and also um, how to do something that is called a blind SQL injection. If you enjoyed this video and you think you learned something today, please thumbs up and subscribe. If you have questions or suggestions, leave a comment in the section below. I've also recently created a Patreon account, so you can go there to support me. And thanks so much. See you next time.